Um, I'm going to try to record it in blocks of the topic, and then I can label the video files by topic. Um, I am recording in MP4 format, which is uploadable to YouTube, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I just uploaded my first video to YouTube the other day, just as a test trial, and, and it, it seems to work. Um, I didn't try the link, but at least I was able to upload it. Um, closed captioning needs, needs work, um, but at least for now, um, since as far as I know, nobody in the class is hearing impaired, we can fly for now with that. Um, so we'll see. But I think it'll help if you have um, recorded lectures, so that when you go home, if you miss something, you know. All right, so um, we'll see how it goes. I've never tried it before. So, um, But this time, I'm recording an MP4 format, which is uploadable to YouTube. Before I tried it, the other format it didn't work. So. OK, so we are still in chapter three. Um, we are going to finish empirical formula slash molecular formula. We, we left off last time with an example um, where they would do different percentages, but I'll, I'll have a different example this time. And then we'll um, just briefly cover balancing chemical equations if you should have had um, exposure to that from Chem 107 or prior Chem course. And then we'll start chapter four, which is, which is what I call a beast, because um, it's so long. Um, and, and it kind of encompasses all of Chem 107 in one chapter, which is why I call it the beast. But I'll try to make it as, as clear as humanly possible. OK, so, um, so we left off with this example. Um, we named this compound tetraphosphorus tetra, or he hexaoxide. See, does everybody remember this example? We left on it. It's been like almost a week, but OK. So um, moving on to another example, I mean, this is a perfect way maybe to start the morning to talk about dirty gym socks. But I found this example and I liked it. So um, the smell of dirty gym socks is caused by the compound caproic acid, and it contains uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, the combustion of this compound, um, which uh, the mass of that sample weighed 0.844 grams of caproic acid, produced 0.74 grams of water and 1.92 grams of carbon dioxide. Um, the molar mass of caproic acid is 116.2 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula? OK, so instead of giving you percentages, now it gives you masses. Um, now, what they often do, um, if they want to identify a compound, one way to do it would be to burn the compound, send the uh, byproducts through a, a waste stream where you've got filters that will help trap water and carbon dioxide, and you can weigh those quantities. And from there, um, you can decipher how many um, grams of hydrogen was from your caproic acid, or how many grams of carbon was from your caproic acid. And then the mass difference you can get with the oxygen, or from, uh, for the oxygen. OK, so you may not have seen this before in chemo so this might be a slightly different type of problem. OK, so let's just do it over here. Okay, um, so what, what did we, um, any idea of what we can possibly do to start the problem? Um, if you go back a couple slides, what's the first step that we could try? Go back a couple of slides. So the procedure for empirical formula, it says, step one, convert mass percent to grams. Okay, but we don't have mass percents, but there's an alternative first step I have listed there. So what, what is it? It just says convert grams of each compound into grams of element. So if we convert grams of water into grams of hydrogen, and if we convert grams of CO2 into grams of carbon, we can get the grams of at least two of our three elements in this caproic acid. Does that make sense? So how do we go from grams of a compound to grams of an element? Well, that goes back to our mass to mole conversion table and using that, those, that technique. So let's just go um, into that. So it said 1.29 grams of CO2, and I want to get to grams of just carbon. So how do I do that? Right, right. So grams to moles, uh, molar mass of C 
CO2 is 44.01 grams for every one mole of CO2. And then there's a mole ratio there. So for every one mole of CO2, you have one mole of carbon. Right, right. One mole of carbon for every one mole of CO2. And then if I want to get back to mass of carbon, what do I do? So for every one mole of carbon, you have 12.01 grams of carbon. Right, so I got 12.01 grams of carbon for every mole of carbon. OK, so, um, so from there, you run that, that number, and you would get something like 0 0.04. 363, um, sig fig wise, the, the six is your last significant figure. Um, with these kind of calculations, um, you're, as long as you get in the right ballpark, you'll get the right answer for the molecular formula. So the sig figs aren't as important for these problems. So this is, oops, this is grams of carbon. And we'll do the same thing with hydrogen from the grams of water. Grams of water, molar mass of water. You probably have this memorized by now. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, 18 point, uh, 18.02 grams of water for every one mole of water. Um, our mole ratio for hydrogen is what? One mole of, for every one mole of H2O, you have two moles of Right, two moles of water, right? So now I've got a two mole of hydrogen to one mole of water ratio. So moles of water cancel, grams of water cancel. And then from there, um, how do I get to uh, moles of, or grams of hydrogen? Well, grams of hydrogen would be 1.08. Right. So for every one mole of hydrogen, I have approximately 1.01 gram of H. If you use more, more digits, that's fine, but um, I usually, just by convention, use more masses to two decimal places, just by convention. Okay, so that gives us our grams of hydrogen. That comes out to be 0 0.08701 grams of H. Okay. Oops, excuse me, that's moles, not grams. I'm copying the wrong numbers here. That's 0.8788. And then I had the wrong grams of carbon here too. Sorry about that. That would be 0.524 grams. Okay, so reading the wrong line in my paper here. So these are the correct grams of carbon and hydrogen. So any questions so far? So we just took the grams of the compound, or grams of each product into the grams of each element. But what about the oxygen? Because here's the thing, the oxygen, what, when you do this kind of, it says here, um, um, the combustion of 0.844 grams. So when you have combustion, what does that make you think of in terms of um, caproic acid? What, what are we reacting caproic acid with to do combustion? Oxygen, oxygen right? So we're, we obviously have an excess of oxygen in this combustion process. So the question becomes, well, um, is the oxygen, we don't want to weigh the oxygen from the excess oxygen used to burn the caproic acid. We just want the oxygen from the caproic acid itself. <clears throat> so this is why we're converting the grams of each product into grams of the particular element, and we can subtract these masses from the mass of the sample of the caproic acid, right? So the grams of atomic oxygen, let me use a different color. So grams of O is going to equal to the mass of the capro 
salicylic acid, 0.844 grams. And we'll just call this CA, mass of the, the protic acid sample. And it's going to we're going to subtract the mass of these two elements. Okay, so 0.5240. Minus 0 0.08788. And so the grams of just oxygen alone, I think I left a blank slide for you to write more on in, the, in that event, <clears throat> would be um, point, let's see, point, uh, two three. So we have the grams of each element now. Any idea of what we could do from here? So ultimately the goal is to get the moles of each element and then divide by the smallest moles. And that's a typical empirical formula problem. So how can we get from grams to back to moles? Just yeah, just divide by the molar mass of each element, you get back to um, the moles. So, moles of carbon is going to equal to our mass of carbon, 0.5240 grams. Divide that by the molar mass, we get moles of carbon. All right, so that would give us, let's see, um, we got uh, point. 0, 4, 3, 6, 3. Moles of H. Take the grams of H divided by its molar mass. Should look really familiar, hopefully. Okay, so what's the last step that we have to do? Yeah, look at the smallest moles of the three, you know, divide each one by that smallest moles, and we'll get um, hopefully whole number ratios for the subscripts of caprotic acid. Um, it may not come out to um, a whole number, and that in that case, we might have to multiply by an integer, but let's hope, let's hope we get. So the smallest of the moles uh, is which one? The oxygen, right? 0 0.01. Okay, so uh, divide each one of these by 0 0.01451 moles of oxygen. Bottom one clearly comes out to um, one. 
and we get uh, for the hydrogen ratio, we get six. And then for the um, carbon, we would get 3.01. So what is my empirical formula for propylic acid? Right, so it would be, be C3H6, and then, oh, all right, that would be the empirical formula. So a little bit different maybe than what you saw in Chem 107, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, that's the question. So how do you know which order to put them in? As far as like C3H6? Oh, um, normally um, you go in alphabetical order, like CHO. That, that, that's like an op, that's what they commonly do. Um, but uh, for hydrocarbons, like if you have a compound that has carbon in it and then hydrogen, usually they'll mention the carbon first, but it just happens to be in alphabetical order too, so it's, it's pretty common. But let's just say you didn't write it in alphabetical order. Would it be wrong? No. You know, the empirical formula doesn't tell you anything about how the atoms are structured, it just tells you just the ratio of the elements. You know, so it doesn't, you know, you could put O and then C3H6, or you could put H6C3O, you know what I mean? But it'd be correct. Right, any way you want to write it. Okay, so that's the empirical formula. Um, the question asked us, um, what is the molecular formula, right? So there is one last step we have to do. So what's the last thing we have to do? Right, exactly. So. Um, so let's say here, uh, molar mass MM of C3H6O, okay, and then we work all that out, um, 3 times 12.01 plus 6 times 1.01 plus the 16th in the oxygen, and that gives us a molar mass for the empirical formula of 58.09. Grams for every one mole of that substance. The uh, ratio for um, the molecular formula to empirical formula. <clears throat> it gives us a molecular formula molar mass of one sixteen point two grams per mole, and then of course we divide that by fifty eight grams per mole. And so the ratio comes out to be um, 2. So therefore, what is our molecular formula? Right, so just multiplying all these subscripts by 2. C6 So here's the thing, um, in order to find the moles of oxygen, which we would need, to, we need all the moles of all the elements in, in, the, in the compound. And from the grams of CO2 and the grams of water, we can't get the grams of, CO, uh, of oxygen directly from those, because there's oxygen in both of these. So it's like, which one would you use to get the oxygen? Um, and then we're doing a combustion process, so there's oxygen just built into this system already. There's excess oxygen in this combustion environment. So it's not able, we're not able to get the oxygen just, just from these two products. So the thought process was, well, let's get the grams of the carbon and the hydrogen, subtract it from the mass of the sample, and then the remainder of the mass has to be due to oxygen from the caproic acid itself. 
I hope that makes sense. So you're trying to find the oxygen using the whole process, right? Yeah, using, using the, yeah, so we're doing combustion. The carbon isn't coming from the air around, right? Like the carbon has to be coming from the caproic acid. The hydrogen also has to be coming from the caproic acid. Um, you know, but the oxygen is from the air that we're using to burn this caproic acid. But there is some oxygen actually in the caproic acid as well. And the only way to decipher that oxygen from the oxygen in the air is to subtract the masses of the carbon and hydrogen from the mass of our sample, and then the difference has to be due to oxygen only in caproic acid. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, it seemed like we kind of went almost like overboard, and it's kind of like, well, why why do we why do we have to get the grams of the element? Why couldn't we have just stopped at moles, stopped there, and then just started dividing by the smallest moles? But we had to take into account the oxygen, and the only way to do that would be to subtract the grams from the mass of the sample that we burned. <coughs> so a little bit different, um, in, in Chem 107, um, you may have just had percentages of the elements given to you, and at that point you assume you have 100 grams, and then you get the grams of each element that way. Um, those are a little bit easier. Um, this one is more, more Chem 111A-ish. Um, they're all kind of done this way. Um, so, any other questions on empirical formula or molecular formula from a combustion process? Um, they're all kind of like this. All right. So, that's it for empirical formula and molecular formula.